Hi everyone, welcome to Maths World UK. I'm James Grime and today I'm speaking with Alex Bellos. Alex is an author of mathematical books including Alex's Adventures in Numberland and his latest book, The Language Lover's Puzzle Book. And that's because Alex loves his maths, he loves languages and he loves puzzles. In fact, that's what Alex has brought in to show us today. Alex is going to show us how they count in Danish. In fact, first of all, Alex is going to challenge you to see if you can work out how they count in Danish and then there'll be an opportunity for you to pause the video to think about it and then we're going to talk about the solution. It's not going to be much of a challenge if you already speak Danish, but hopefully a challenge for everyone else. But I started our conversation by asking Alex if he had always been interested in languages. I say my first love was math, that is true. And then I became a writer, that is true. But I guess the other big thing in my life in terms of kind of learning and knowledge is languages. So my mum was born in Hungary, but uh, was a French national and met my father in Russia. And my father, who is a, speaks German and French. So there were lots of languages being spoken at home. But I think there's a real connection also. I mean, an obvious one between mathematics and language. I mean. Mathematics is a type of language, but I really liked, you know, I studied German A-level. So I did maths, uh, double, double maths, physics, and German. And I loved the German, I loved the, the rules I was having to learn in German, the order. Um, yeah, so I've always been really attracted to the sort of, I guess, linguistics, like the language, the science of language. So what have you brought along to show us today? So I've brought you a number puzzle in Danish. So now you can see these are Danish numbers. On the left, there is a column where we have the words for a few numbers in Danish and the actual digits that describe those numbers. Mm -hmm. So Führe is four, then six or tres is 66, et cetera, et cetera. You've got that list there. And the question is on, on the right list, you need to work out what those numbers are. Okay, so I want you to start thinking through um, how you would go about it. So essentially you need to kind of break down, we're trying to work out what is the structure of how the Danish count to 100. So obviously we're given these single digits for free. Fear is four, fem is five, tre is three, ni is nine. And we can see some of these ones appearing on these ones on the right. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe you can start filling in the ones here. So six here is going to be six, pretty much. You can pretty, we, we'd pretty be pretty happy with that. that. But one thing that you see in all of them, I'm just going to highlight here, which is that obviously when I saw this puzzle and tried to work it out myself, the first thing I saw was you've got og appears here mm. and here. And here, so essentially, whenever you have a two-digit number, you've got an og. So one would deduce that is and, and that you've got the what you've got something comes before it, something comes after it, and one of those is going to be the units, and one is going to be the tens. So I can see two and twenty. Mm. If we know that two tv is two and twenty, well, two tres is like two. Be likely to be uh, 32. Two. But I see six or tres is 66. So I'm changing my mind to 62. And I can see tre or tire. Is that uh, 23? Yeah. So I can see, okay, I can see. Was it four is fear? Yeah. And fierce is 80. Correct. So um, I'm thinking this is base 20 maths. Which is correct. Uh, which means we're counting in 20. So four lots of 20 to make 80. So correct. one and 80, it's one and four lots of 20. That's what I think it means. You've worked out almost everything. The weirdest and the most complicated and hardest thing to work out about Danish numbers. Why 
do we have in the word for 50, the word for half and the word for three? And it shows why um, to solve these problems, you need to have the mathematical brain, you need to have the deductive brain, the sort of pattern recognition and working it all out. But then you also need to have the non-mathematical brain because language isn't logical. The way people talk about things is, there are so many kind of anomalies and ambiguities in language. So you need to kind of step back and try and work out. Actually, what they're saying is that when you're counting by 20s, it's halfway to the next 20. So half fields is halfway from, it's halfway to 420s, as in halfway from 320s to 420s. Having looked at the words for numbers across Europe, Denmark definitely has the strangest European system, by far, definitely. I really enjoy part of the kind of the foreign correspondent, finding out how different cultures do things. And researching my math books, I've been to many countries and I always try and find out the, um, how they do numbers. In the Far East, they have the simplest number systems where they go one to 10, and then it's 10, one, 10, two, to two, 10. And this studies show means that children are actually better at counting and learn. They're about a year ahead um, in early primary years even though it doesn't make much difference after that. And the place with the weirdest bases in the world, I say weird, I, I don't mean that to be kind of, kind of colonial and reductive of other cultures. I mean, the, um, the most mathematically unusual are in Papua New Guinea. So there is a puzzle in my book, which is about a country that has a, it's either base 14 or a base 28 number system. And essentially what they do is they have words, independent words for one to um, 14. Then they go 28 minus 13, 28 minus 12, 28 minus 11, all the way up. And the reason they do that is that their chemical system is based on parts of the body. So it's kind of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and goes up to 14 and then back again. So, we have a base 10 system, not because there's anything about 10 that makes it a good number, but because we've got 10 digits. But if you started counting on your fingers, but then carried up, up the arm and up like to the nose and the eyes, you will end up with slightly numerically random um, base systems, which to me is really fascinating and makes for great puzzles. And if a language lover wanted to find more puzzles, um, where would they find some? So there are lots of language, sort of basically them kind of math language puzzles in the language lovers puzzle book, which is, yeah, my latest book in all good bookstores. Not that bookstores are open. <laughs> all good online bookstores, I guess. Thanks to Alex for showing us how they count in Danish. I hope you found that interesting. And if you love your maths and you love your puzzles and you love your languages, then you should get Alex's book and we'll put a link for that in the description. But that's all from me for now. So I'll say stay curious. I'll see you next time.